Hi, uh, my name is Mario Zechner. I'm the author of the workshop Android Game Development 101. In this video I'm going to show you how you can work with the Subversion repository as well as the Google Code page for the workshop. The first thing you have to do is get a Subversion client. Uh, there's a couple of options for you depending on your platform. So for Windows I usually use Tortoise S4N. The pronunciation is probably a little bit different, but you can just Google for it install it and you will get additions to your context menus for Windows Explorer. Um, that's basically it for Mac OS X and Linux. There's command line utilities and there's also a couple of graphical user interfaces. Uh, you can use, please uh, choose your poison. Okay, um, back to the Google code page. Um, all the source code and the slides for the workshop are located in an SVN repository managed by Google code. So on the Google co Code page, go to the Source tab and copy the URL of the SVN trunk, which contains all the source code and slides, to your clipboard, at least on Windows. The next thing you have to do is check out uh, all the source code from the SVN repository. I already did this, but I'll repeat it here. Okay, so with Tortoise SVN, I just have to right-click uh, on say the desktop or within the Windows Explorer window and select SVN Checkout. Here we have to enter the URL for the repository, which is just what we copied to the clipboard, and specify a checkout directory, which is where the code will get downloaded to. So I just specify a folder on my desktop. Press OK and Totoas SVN will check out all the things we need. This can take a little while. Okay, so we are done. The next thing we have to do is uh, open up Eclipse, and I assume you have your Eclipse uh, set up correctly, which means you have Eclipse installed, you have the Java SDK installed, you have the Android SDK installed, as well as the ADT plugin for Eclipse, which allows you to create Android projects in Eclipse. If you haven't done so already, I'd suggest you search the web for instructions on how to do this. On the Android developer side, there's a comprehensive guide on how to set up everything, so just follow that. Once you've done this, you can come back to Eclipse and it's time to import our workshop project. For this, go to File, Import, select General, Existing Projects into Workspace. Next, browse to the directory where you checked out the source code to, which in my case is in the HED 101 directory on desktop. Press OK and Eclipse will tell you that there is one project which can be imported. So just press Finish and Eclipse will work its magic. It can take a little while and you probably end up with an error like this. The project is missing a required source folder called Gen. Um, that's a folder that's auto-generated by the ADT plugin. Uh, for some reason, uh, if you import an Android project, the plugin usually fails to create this folder. So if this happens, in my case it worked, just go to Project, Clean, and Clean All Projects and press OK. This will trigger a rebuild of your project and will also tell ADT to regenerate this gen folder. Okay, so that's basically it. The last thing you have to do is create a run configuration so you can actually run uh, all the examples plus the demo game on your Android device or emulator. For this you just have to click on the little arrow beside the run button, select run configurations, Double-click on Android application, give it a proper name, say HED Runner, uh, select the project, which is just the HED 101 project, and then you can specify whether you want to launch the default activity, which is the Droidonoid game, or whether you want to launch one of the example activities we developed in the workshop. So the later case is a little bit more flexible and if you want to play around with stuff I'd suggest just clicking on launch and selecting your launch activity. Um, let's say the move example we created during the workshop.
it. Okay, say apply and press run. I won't do this here because that would fire up the emulator which would bring my machine down to its knees. So I just close it. Next time you press the run button, your Android project will be run on either the emulator or device starting the activity you selected. Okay, um, the slides are also located in the SVN repository as you can see. I only have them in the PPTX format at the moment. I'll convert them to PDF and upload them to the subversion repository as soon as possible. You just have to update your checkout then, which works by pressing right click on the folder and calling SVN update on Windows. On Linux and Mac OS X it's a sim similar process. On the CLI for example just press SVN update or enter SVN update in your shell in the directory where you checked out the code to. Okay, so let's have a brief look at the code itself. Um, this version of the code, oh, I'm going to change the package representation here to a Rackco, which is a lot nicer. So, uh, this version of the code is fully documented, which means there's Java docs for everything. This should help you uh, plow through the code a little bit more easier and also use it a little bit easier in your own games if you choose to use the framework we developed in the in the workshop. So there's the Trollonite game, which just consists consists of a couple of files. Uh, in the com.batlogic.hd package you have all the framework classes. In the workshop package you have the mover example we developed, which is basically a re-implementation of the game mechanics of the Troidonoid game. And there is an examples folder which contains some very, very simple examples on how to use the framework. Uh, a quick note on licensing. All the code in the Subversion repository is licensed under the Apache 2 license, so you can basically do with it whatever you want. I'd suggest reading through the license uh, at this URL. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything, it's just about giving attribution. So you can use this in commercial and non-commercial games if you want. Uh, for the content, which means graphics and audio, there's a separate content license. Some of this content is taken from third parties, so you're under no circumstance allowed to use those in commercial or non-commercial game. Uh, in this case I'm relying on the fair use clause, which means this is an educational thing, so we are allowed to use it in this context, don't use it in your own games. Um, and the PowerPoint slides are under the Commons, uh, Creative Commons license, SY, I think. It's the one which doesn't allow you to commercialize these slides. So you can read them, you can print them, you can redistribute them, if you try to make money with them, I'm going to kill you. Okay, so that's that. And if you have any problems, any commands, I'd suggest dropping me an email at this email address or going to my blog, which is at batlogicgames.com and just go to the forums. I'll create a separate forum for the workshop where you can post any questions, bug reports or other issues you have. Oh, and also if you have a real bug report, there is something called an issue tracker on the Google code page, which you can find here. Just open a new issue and specify exactly what's going wrong and uh, how I can reprodu reproduce uh, the problem so I can fix it. I'll then update the SVN repository and you can get the fixes by updating your local copy of the SVN repository. Okay, that's it. Have fun. Ciao.